of Mary is the new evangelization.com and today we are interviewing George Crail a uh, longtime activist for life and a good friend of mine and he's who are you holding George well this is Lily one of my nine grandkids yeah okay <laughs> and uh, she so you have to excuse her. She's just getting over being sick. Here uh, comes her mom. That's better. So, George, uh, how long have you been serving God? Uh, 29 years I've been with the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Could you just share a little bit about your life before you uh, well, I, turned I, over I, the I Lord? Well, I come from, um, and most homes are this way nowadays. It's a broken home where the mom and dad are getting divorced. Dad's over drinking. Uh, mom is just... You know, um, a lot of heartache, sister that died, uh, a brother, uh, tragedy after tragedy. Uh, anyhow, um, as my heart hurt, instead of allowing Jesus to help me, it turned me further into drugs and drinking myself, and uh, I got wilder and wilder, and in, in, after I got saved, I understood that God wanted to help me, but I wouldn't come to him on his terms, you know, and... Uh, uh, I my philosophy was that oh yeah there's a God but He doesn't want to get involved you know like He doesn't care about us personally and uh, when I came to the end of myself when I was about 29 and uh, my wife and I had aborted a child and that devastates I still cry over it now uh, we aborted a child you know 30 some years ago and. Um, just the, the loss of that child uh, to commit to sin because I never thought I was that. Oh, I'm not a bad guy, you know. I yeah, and and as I got older, I committed every sin and even murder, you know, adultery, you know, stealing and and uh, to kill a child. And you don't just walk away from that. You got to drown that in alcohol and drugs. And finally, I I, I reached the, at the end of myself and I cried out to Jesus that I learned about as a. Uh, young boy in uh, Sunday school, you know, I said, Jesus, will you help me? I felt his presence right behind me, and when I was 17, I said, I'm not ready to follow Jesus. Here I am, 29, out of my mind, uh, living the outlaw biker lifestyle, doing all the, the wicked stuff, and, and, I, and I said, Jesus, help me. You know, and he appeared, and he said, are you ready now? The very words I rejected when I was 17, said, I'm not ready for this. He appeared behind me and said, Jesus, help me. And he spoke to my heart of hearts. He said, are you ready? And I was crying. I said, I'm ready. And then I turned into the Jesus freak. As zealous as I was for the devil, I became that zealous for Jesus. And I'm so glad. And that was 29 years ago. My wife got saved after me. I, I have a, a four kids and uh, two adopted. And, and, and they're all following God. One is still a prodigal. But uh, just <laughs> what God has given me in my life, living, living that hedonistic lifestyle it, uh, style costs you, costs me so much. And, uh, and, I, and I regret it so much. But Jesus has put in my, my heart the reason to live, the reason to get up in the morning and go to bed at night. And uh, Tom here is the one who opened my eyes to this abortion holocaust. He showed me a picture of an aborted child. I couldn't believe I didn't have understanding. That's what I'd done to my child. And once I'd seen that picture, then I, just like God wants us to receive him personally, I, I personally understood that this was a human being, a child of mine, that I, 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 as the Bible says, well, I give the fruit of my womb for the sin of my soul. My wife and I gave our child to the lies of the devil. And uh, So, you, uh, <clears throat> are now serving God, and I know that you spend a lot of time out at the abortion clinics trying to reach young girls uh, to talk them out of uh, uh, killing their children. Right. Okay, George, tell us just a couple things that you've seen out there. I know you've it's been. True. I was just there the other day, and here's a 15 year old girl, and I was talking to the fellow that brought her, and I, we tell her, whatever you want us to do, we'll help you. And here this guy start sharing that she she has to get the abortion and it's like no she doesn't we'll help her she can stay at our house saying she has to get the abortion he's she's pregnant by my brother who's married with kids so here it's it's rape but you know uh statutory rape but everybody's rape a minor so we we called the cops the cops came out but they basically don't do anything but the, the understanding that these guys that are molesting and raping these young girls can take them to a place and safely kill that child safely for them, not for the child. And then the day before that, 
uh, we had two turnarounds. My, there's two abortion mills in, right near us in New Jersey. My wife had a turnaround. And uh, grandmother basically said, I'm not going to burn in hell on this one. And, and told her daughter, we're leaving. But us being out there, us taking it personal. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you did to me. And the original Greek is the tiniest. Jesus takes it personal, what's happening to these children. This is Christ being crucified over and over again. Well, let me ask you a question. So here's this 15-year-old girl, and the father is a married man. Right. This child has, from the world's perspective, really no place to go. Right. We would have okay. taken him in. The okay. So if you would have taken him in, the, the girl would have had to go through adoption. The, the whole truth of the child would have come out. It could have ended right. a, a marriage. would have ended up in divorce. The brother brought her uh, there. And that's what he kept saying. She can't have this baby. It's a married man. So why are you saying that it's... Uh, Instead of causing all that heartache in this family, where there would probably be a divorce, there would right. be all kinds of shame, the child would uh, not even be raised by their own family, why is it still just absolutely so offensive that they abort the child under those circumstances? As, as you seek the Lord and want to understand truth, you realize that that child has every right to be here as you, you know. Um, Every child is created in the image of God. In America, our children, are, are, the child in the womb is treated like yesterday's garbage. It's ridiculous. No one has gotten here via flying saucer. We all came in our mother's womb. God, the Bible is clear, God opens and closes the womb. There's no accident to God. He has a purpose for all of our lives. And what grieves God's heart is the church, as they read these scriptures, like Psalm 139, it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, yet they won't apply it to the babies in the womb. And I warn all the elders, pastors, and priests, uh, if you're familiar with it, we had a guy involved in a scandal from Penn State, the coach, Joe Paterno. And his assistant coach had molested about a dozen, <laughs> had molested about a dozen um, young young boys. And, and um, this... We got a little quad accident over there, but this um, this coach Joe Paterno, once they found out that he looked the other way while innocent children were molested, everybody rejected him. All his good works, 14 years of victories, and as his football coach, he was everybody's hero. They didn't care. They struck out all of his good works, struck him down. Tore down his statue and all that. Point being is, what do you think God's going to do to the elders, pastors, and teachers? I told them, I tell them, your good works are going to burn up because this isn't my holocaust. The church is looking the other way while all these children are being murdered. These are God's children. We're just stewards to look out for. Them. Nobody owns the child. So, if, George, if you had a chance to sit with that girl, the 15-year-old girl who was raped right. by... Uh, an older man, right? Okay, uh, what what would you tell her, George? If you had, you know, two minutes with that girl, what would you say to her? Uh, first of all, it's got to be Jesus to win their their heart. It's a spiritual battle. So I would automatically go in and tell her, look, there's people that'll support you. There's a God that loves you, and this is no accident. The child hasn't done anything wrong. You know, the child is, the Bible says, is a gift and a blessing, no matter what the circumstances. And I have friends in that that had uh, adopted child that, that came out of the very same situation and, and loved that child. And the idea is that you're special, that child's special, and you do the right thing, you know, and then God will help you and bless you. There's two million people looking to adopt every year. There's only a pool of about 50,000 people. And uh, Jesus, if, if you allow him, will help you. Well, don't you think that uh, God would understand if uh, she had that abortion, that being 15 years old, uh, a rape situation, uh, and that she could just start over again and not make the same mistake? Well, well if, 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 you, if you ignore God's word, uh, Psalm 51, King David said, I was a sinner at conception. That means each one of us at conception, when the sperm meets the egg, we're a soul created in the image of God. All of us have worth. So it's murder. That's why they kill it. They they take the life out of this child in the womb. It's being murdered. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an evangelical. I was an elder pastor. Uh, I mean, an elder teacher and all, all that uh, uh, for, for 20 years. And I just really 
I'm starting to disown the, the Protestant evangelical church with the idea that they won't stand up for life. Like, like it said, uh, the pill is the mother of abortion. You know, when you think that child in the womb that's fearfully and wonderfully made, that's knitted together, as it says in Psalm 139, in the secret place, if you think it's any less than uh, the ultimate pinnacle of God's creation, the human being, then, then you're, you're, you're turning your back on God's truth. So, <clears throat> George, how is this girl's life going to be better if she chooses to bring that child to, to birth? Right, right, right. Well, 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 we all have consciences. That's how God made us. That's how we're wired. And uh, doing the right thing will bless you. The Bible says that the blood cries out, you know, uh, against the murderers, you know. So, you know, sh you, you shed innocent blood and it'll cry out against you. We know that blood has a voice because it's a person. The blood of uh, Abel cried out against his brother Cain. You know, so the Psalm 106 says they sacrifice your children to demons. These are demons lying to people to get them to kill, kill their children and give the devil the ultimate sacrifice. But if we sacrifice ourselves and say, all right, Jesus, whatever you're going to do, I'm going to trust you whether it be adoption or raising the child yourself. But God is the author of life. No one has a right to take a life. Okay, so, life. so uh, <clears throat> you believe that if she aborts this child, she would end up in hell? Well, for, first of all, that to have an, uh, an abortion, what would put you in hell is you reject Jesus as your Lord. So if you're committing abortion, he's not your Lord. You know, just like a liar shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. But the kingdom of heaven belonged to children. And America has killed over 60 million children. Not to count what the pill and everything else is doing. 60 million children. So that's basically an understatement that the kingdom of heaven belonged to children. So if you murdered your child, unless you repent of it, how are you going to go to heaven and hang out with children that have all been murdered? You know, like myself, I have salvation because of the blood of Jesus, but he's my Lord. I've repented, you know, and, and I love him. I, I hate to go out to the bushing mill, but I would not stand by it and allow all these children to die without anybody caring. What a horrible thing for an innocent person to die. Nobody cares. America, the church is dead in the sleep. So do you believe that these babies that are aborted go to heaven? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, but no different than uh, my uh, little granddaughter. I was holding up this year and a half, and I wouldn't stand by if anybody hurt them. You know? So we have to hold up God's standard, and just as Jesus sacrificed and laid His life down for us, that we, grace, love is to lay your life down for someone else. But uh, you know, um, we, God wants our hearts, and again, the extension in God's eyes is it um, those killing the babies because they are they're going to hell. The abortion industry and all that are going to hell. They need Jesus. Jesus will heal and forgive them. But what upsets God is his church standing back and allowing this to go on. Because I'm, I'm an older fellow. I remember when it wasn't legal. Yeah. And I remember yeah. when the church was rising up against it. But now we're just accepting yeah, it. it like and it's not where we go. They do 40, 50 abortions a day. It's important to understand Medicaid pays for it. They give a medical transport, twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars for a six month abortion. That's insanity. These poor girls. It's an attack on the poor and the minorities. They wouldn't get these abortions if the government wasn't paying for them. But uh, again, the church is silent. The church wants to play church. It just wants whatever feels good. It won't pick up the cross. This is the cross. Okay. So, if George, as far as we know, she went through with that abortion. Okay. And you said that you had lost a child through abortion as well. So what would you tell her now, you know, if she's already lost that if child? She, if she's had the, the abortion, uh, yeah. you, you have to go, go to Jesus and uh, identify what you did. You don't get healed. There's a lot of women in church that have abortions and they haven't been healed. you got to identify that as a child. We're going to see these children during the millennium, the thousand-year reign of Christ on earth. And... Uh, you're going to see that child again, and you have to tell the Lord and, and to your own child that you're sorry you did this, that God forgive me, and the blood of Jesus will pay for your sins, but you got it. You, you, you have to begin to walk in God's love. This is lust out of control. It, it, these children being murdered are just the result of a society that's turned its back on God's love, and I was one of them. You know, I was an outlaw biker living, you know, that hedonistic life uh, style sex and yeah. drugs and Harley Davidson man I didn't, I didn't care about anything but my you know my 
hedonistic pleasures, you know, and I so regret it. And there is a devil. That's who they're sacrificing these children to. That's who's yeah. lying to them. The battlefield's in your mind. So you, you're the baby that you yeah. aborted. Right. Have you ever seen that child? Talked to that child? Named that child? How well, do you well, know for named, sure we, that we there's? Named, we named the child. In our hearts, we know we'll see the child again. Uh, having nine grandkids and other children, it's the reality that if you know you believe in God, God's put that in us. Uh, I had a, a vision. I'm not one for vision, but I really had a, a very powerful vision. I was riding on my motorcycle. I was going out to the bush mill, and I was just crying about the, the, what they do out there. You have to get connected to it because you won't understand. But I, as I, as I was going out there on my bike. I was thinking how I would be a martyr for Jesus. Whatever he wants, I'll die at, at that abortion mill to give the children value. And, 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 and I seen like a vision. I seen all these little kids, only like a year and a half, just like my, my grandchildren. And they were all in like white robes. And they were so happy. And they were dancing around me. And uh, it's like the Holy Spirit. And I could see while I'm riding my bike. And it wasn't, it was like 3D, but it wasn't obstructing my view. And, um, the, the Holy Spirit said, well, well you, you know what, because I'm thinking, what is it? And, and the Holy Spirit said, these are all children that, that you gave their uh, life value. You were at the abortion mill saying, please don't hurt this child. Please protect this child. And now in the millennium, they're going to know me because their parents, unless they repent, as I've done, and get saved, they're, they're not going to have anybody. But they're going to know me that I was out there. They're going to know me, and, 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 and they were so happy to see me, and I, and I believe I seemed like Jesus bringing me a martyr to himself. You know, it was just a bunch of light and all that. But the understanding, what was happening is I was making it personal. See, you're saved when you make Jesus personally your God. He can't be far off. He's the lover of your soul. And then the greatest commandment is to love your neighbor. Love Jesus and love your neighbor. And that's what I was doing, loving, loving the children. And, and then you come into God's dimension as you throw off unforgiveness, as you throw off lust, and you want to love your neighbor. This is loving. This is truly what loving your neighbor is. Thank you, George. Would you um, <clears throat> say a prayer for anybody yeah. that might be thinking sure, of having an sure, abortion? And sure. Thanks. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you that, that you are the resurrection and the life, and you are going to resurrect all these children. You're going to put their bodies together again. You're the creator. You're going to raise them from their dead because their spirits, all of our spirits are very eternal. I pray for all the moms and dads that have lost children, grandmoms and grandpops that allowed it to go on. We pray for the church in America. Lord, heal our land. Give us a love for you. Give these mommies a love for their babies. And then give them the righteous indignation to stand up. Stand up against this Holocaust, America's Holocaust, Father. And in Jesus' name, do the healing. And may they look forward like I'm looking forward to seeing all these children again, Lord. I really believe the millennium we're going to see all these children. Because Jesus said the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. Heal us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, George. Yeah.